Every single internet marketer will tell you there is no downside to making internet content. Well, they were wrong. Time to think like an investor. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Josh. And if you're new here, that means you're not really aware that I've been on a long posting hiatus from YouTube. It's been a few months and a lot of you have been wondering where the heck am I? Because you subscribed and you liked and you did all the things I told you to do and then I didn't show up. Well, I'm gonna let you know a little secret. It was about four months ago when my business was going through a bit of an overhaul. There were a lot of tech glitches in the back end that made it really difficult to do business. And one of the partners who was partly responsible for this was coming out with some new upgrades to make our business nice and smooth and everything was gonna operate great. I get an email from them and I think, thank goodness, they're finally gonna implement some of these upgrades that's gonna make our business run smoother. And in this email, there's a link to book a call with the CEO and I'm like, oh, this is very interesting. So I go through and I book the call and it comes a few days later and I'm getting ready for this call and I sign on to the Zoom one day and what I see is, the CEO of the company and the chief compliance officer. Uh-oh. And so it turns out they're having issues with the YouTube channel. Now, if you're totally unfamiliar with the financial services space or you're not an advisor yourself, you will not then understand that this is a very heavily regulated industry. We are in charge of helping direct and advise people on their life savings. And what this means is every now and then there's going to be a bad actor. <laughs> and we need to come up with a new law to prevent people from getting hurt. And so now we live in this massive world of tons of compliance burden, which means there are certain things we can say and certain things we can't say. And so it was brought to my attention that there were many different things being said on this YouTube channel that didn't fall into their framework for what I was allowed to say as marketing. By the way, this channel for me has nothing to do with marketing for my business. This is about helping other younger advisors succeed. It's about helping those advisors, clients and retail investors navigate their financial plans and their accumulation of their wealth, but they didn't see it that way. Now they came with a book and a list of little highlights and all these things that I needed to change. And obviously this isn't what I was hoping for. I thought we were getting a tech revamp and what I was getting was potentially a slap on the wrist from the regulators, but I didn't. I wanna make it known that there was no fines. It was- But that's on you guys. You guys should have let me know that I was taking advantage of you. If you knew I was taking advantage and I was being such a bad person to you, I'd prefer you to shut this YouTube channel down. Well, that's at least what the regulators think. At the end of the day, even though there were no penalties, it was more so just a warning. It turns out that I actually actually kind of did end up paying a penalty in the long way around because I had to take down some of our best and top performing videos. Some of the ones that you guys really loved, commented on and requested more of. So needless to say, I was kind of crushed if I'm honest because I put two years of work. I had finally developed this ability to be consistent and put out content and I was actually starting to get feedback. And then the compliance department comes along and says, nah. -uh. And so I was crushed. I wasn't very happy. It felt like all this momentum I had built had been completely squandered. And so I said, I'm going on vacation. And that's exactly what I did. My girlfriend and I, who you know from this channel, Alana, she's lovely. We traveled across Europe. We went to the United Kingdom. We went to the Netherlands. We went to Croatia. We went to Italy. And we saw all these beautiful, unbelievable places. And it was one of the best times of my life. I had so much fun. And then I came home back to Canada and I traveled across the country. And we just took a lot of time to decompress and realize, well, maybe this project that I've been working on is crushed. What next? What do we do now? The one thing that blew me away the most while I was taking a break is that the subscribers didn't stop climbing and the number of comments and viewers and people sending me messages actually went up. And the amount of people reaching out and saying that my content actually helped them in their career progression or helped them in their personal financial journey, those things all started to grow. They didn't actually go away. And so here's the reality. Creating content, in my mind, is still the single best way to spread your message and grow your business. It literally 10Xs your chance of success in any career without needing to do the cold calling, without needing to wait four years. It's just an explosive way to grow and it grows in perpetuity even when you're not directly working on it. So there was no way I could possibly just call it quits and say no to this given the momentum we had. But by the way, what is it that I technically did wrong? Well, my business isn't licensed to give security specific advice. There is a very specific license you need to tell someone they can or cannot buy stock A, B, and C, or that they should buy X investment because of Y. There are certain things that you cannot recommend. And so I had videos called, should you invest in Amazon right now? 
And that was one of our best performing videos ever. It actually monetized extremely well. In the video, I never actually talked about whether or not you should buy Amazon. I talked about the idea of valuations and looking at a business rather than just buying a price that's going up, which I thought was actually pretty prudent, conservative advice and advice that actually has nothing to do with whether you should buy a specific company. But because we need the clickbait or else you're not gonna click the title, we actually end up having a title that looks like should you buy Amazon, the regulators go wee wee and now We've got a problem. One thing I really find fascinating is the rise of these TikTok investment gurus, YouTube investment advice, all of these different creators who are unlicensed, maybe even uneducated, maybe haven't done their continuing education, don't follow up with all the licensing and regulatory requirements, get to go out on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and say whatever the heck they want. Here's my strategy in a nutshell. I see a stock going up and I buy it, and I just watch it until it stops going up and then I sell it. And, and advise people take their hard earned money and put it into a cryptocurrency that goes to zero. Or they advise that everybody put their money into some stock that is a pump and dump. But for the people who are licensed and registered to give financial advice, who have gotten their designations, who have gone to school, who have done their education, who are actually qualified from real experience helping real humans, those are the people who aren't allowed to say anything because they're regulated by the industry standards. So that's something that's really interesting, which is that we're literally fostering a system in which the people who know nothing get all the voice and the people who actually have something to say aren't allowed to talk. But I know what you're thinking. Josh has a new studio, looks pretty good. Josh is coming out with a video, but apparently he's not gonna be making videos. What's going on here? So I came to a big realization. One of my favorite YouTube channels ever is called TXG Golf. And what it is, is it's a group of professional club fitters who teach other golf pros how to fit clubs to their customers. And that's interesting because at first glance, you wouldn't think you'd learn a lot about golf from a golf fitter, but that is completely incorrect. The discussions that you get to see behind the scenes between a manufacturer and a pro actually give you insights into golf and the dynamics of ball flight laws and all these different nerdy things that golfers love to talk about. And so I thought to myself, hey, wait a second. If we ship this channel to specifically targeting and talking about problems that financial advisors have growing their business and helping create success for their clients. That way we can stay on side with the regulators without having to discuss specific securities. And we can also help independent retail investors and advisors succeed in this paradigm. And so I believe that if I get creative enough and do a good enough job, I will be able to come up with content and ideas that provide massive value to advisors and their clients themselves without having to step on any toes. And lastly, but definitely not least, if there is highly valuable content that just is not super Suitable to be published on YouTube, but I still want to provide that value to you and have those discussions, I highly recommend you check out the newsletter. All you have to do to opt in is click the link below, put in your name and your email, and from there we can have private discussions behind disclaimers that aren't sent out en masse about these topics that I'm gonna have to tiptoe around in the public sphere, but we can have one-to-one -one as people, specifically if you're an advisor. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm so happy to be back. And as always, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and turn on post notifications for more videos just like this one every single week. Until next time.